In this video, I'm gonna help you figure out how to conquer and master the contents of any chapter of any beginning Greek grammar. This, these four steps that I give you in this video are gonna be like your guide to mastering the contents of any beginning Greek lesson you're working on. So, let's get into it. Hey there, I'm Daryl Burling from Master New Testament Greek and I help people like you with the tools, habits and system to master the Greek of the New Testament. If you're interested in learning Greek and learning to read the New Testament and study the New Testament in Greek with a high degree of confidence, then download my free roadmap to mastery at masterintogreek.com slash roadmap. And don't forget to hit subscribe on this video and the notification bell. And if this is helpful, hit the like button as well. Now, one of the things that I often find as I work through beginning Greek with students is that it's quite difficult sometimes to master the concepts of certain chapters, particularly of some grammars more than others. Really what you're looking for in a grammar is a grammar that gives you a consistent amount of work per chapter and doesn't begin to overwhelm you. Some, some grammars, for instance, will give you some chapters that are really quite difficult and other chapters that are really very easy. You really want a grammar that will even that out as much as possible. But regardless of how the grammar works, there are four steps that you can go through that will help you master the content of any chapter. And the way I'm going to talk about this in this video is by likening it to essentially a, a bridge. If you want to cross a river, you need to go from one side of the river to the other side of the river. And typically the best way to do that is to go over a bridge. You can think of these four steps as, if you, if you like, of four stages of building a bridge that will get you across the river of the, the material that you need to master in any given chapter of any given Greek textbook. So, at the end of this video too, I'm going to explain when you can stop doing some of these things as well, because I think that's another helpful element to think about as you plan to go through and as you seek to master the Greek of the New Testament. Now I should mention here that the process that I'm working through here, not only will it work for any beginning Greek grammar, but it's really designed to work through a, a grammar translate method type of grammar. This is the grammar that I use inside Master New Testament Greek, Dr. Merkel and Dr. Plummer's beginning with New Testament Greek. This process will also work with uh, Mounts' Basics of Biblical Greek or any of the great grammars that I typically uh, recommend on this channel. However, if you're looking to just read the New Testament, you don't care about the grammar, you don't want to study the New Testament, you don't want to know how the exegetical commentaries are working, then you don't necessarily need to do these four steps. There are other ways of learning Greek. This is really for those of you who do want to be able to read the New Testament and study the New Testament and be able to read the New Testament with that understanding of the grammar and the reasons why the, the authors have written things the way they have written them. So this is really designed to help you through any beginning Greek grammar and there are four steps, four pieces of bridge if you like, to get you from learning the chapter for the first time or where you perhaps start by just reading the content of the, the grammar to being able to actually complete the translation exercises and feel like you have a degree of confidence in the material in this chapter. So here's the four things. The first one is you want to do your vocabulary. You want to learn the vocabulary in each chapter of this grammar. Now, there's no way around vocabulary. Every single system for learning any given language is going to include vocabulary. And you're always going to be hampered by the lack of vocabulary if you don't take the time to learn vocabulary. Now, in beginning Greek, and it's no different, it doesn't matter what grammar you're using, typically the vocabulary that they give you in any given chapter is going to be keyed to the kind of grammar that they're gonna give you in that same chapter. So if you learn the vocabulary for that chapter, it's gonna help you learn the material in that chapter as well. For instance, if you're about to do a chapter on second aorist verbs, it's very likely that the authors of the grammar are gonna give you words that have second aorist forms. That is, they have a different root in the second, in the aorist tense, right? So this is gonna be very common. So what you wanna do is you, first thing you wanna do is you want to learn that vocabulary because learning the vocabulary will then start to help you to well, provide then material to work through the following pieces of the bridge that we're gonna build out as we go through this segment. Okay, so first thing to do is to learn the vocabulary. This then allows you to actually have something you can then learn and use against some of the concepts you'll be learning in that chapter. The second thing you wanna do after you've learned the vocabulary, the second piece of the bridge to build essentially is to learn the paradigms that the author of the grammar gives you for that chapter. 
Now a paradigm is simply a chart with some sort of changes in morphology or word forms for that chapter. What you need to do is you need to learn the changes that those forms represent in that chart. The way to do this is to actually just create a blank chart and then either print it off or put a copy onto your iPad or other tablet and then write it out over and over again until you can do so from memory. In other words, you want to memorize those charts. The way to do this is really, like I said, to write it out over and over. But as you do that, what I want to encourage you to do is to use as many senses as you can. The more senses you engage in the process of learning, the more you're going to learn this material. So to use the multiple senses, not only do you want to write it out, you want to actually sound it out. Because then what you're doing is not only are you using the kinesthetic kind of movement of your body or your hand to write it out, you're seeing it as you see it written out, and then you're saying it and hearing it. And all of this use of senses helps you to understand and learn those paradigms well. And like I said, you want to do this until you've got those paradigms so that you can write them out from memory, okay? Until you can write them out from memory. Now, if you get to that point where you can write them out from memory, don't stop. Now you want to give yourself a time challenge. So time yourself, how long does it take to do this paradigm from memory now? Let's cut five seconds off it and see if I can do it in that time. And it can, as you get to do that, just reduce the time until you get to a time where you're really writing them out very quickly. Now, again, you're gonna to have to go back and review previous paradigms you've also learned because these things aren't necessarily gonna stay in your mind for the long term, and you want them to. So learn the vocabulary, learn the paradigm, review the paradigm, and then eventually you wanna to start to build the third section of the bridge. Now the third section after your, your vocabulary and after your paradigms, you wanna build a third section by practicing your passing. Now, the vocabulary is about the words, the paradigms is about the morphology and the ending of the words most of the time. Sometimes there's other elements, not just endings, there's augments and tense morphemes and all sorts of things you can learn in there as well. But the point is, then you want to take those two concepts and put them together so that you're starting to see those morphological changes on the words. And the way to do this is using a parsing app. Now in the old days, professors used to give you a passing exam to see if you could figure out how to actually, you know, add these pieces onto the end of a word and identify what they're doing. Today we have passing apps, which are fantastic tools to allow us to practice this in our own time. And last year I actually created a guide to all the different passing apps that are available, well, at least that time anyway. And if you wanna watch that video, you can find a link to it just up here in the corner of this video here. Go watch that video, it will help you to find the best passing apps available today. But there is one that I really still recommend, and that is Pass Greek. Now, none of these apps are perfect, but here's why I recommend Pass Greek. The main reason is that it is keyed to the grammars that you're most likely to be using. Let's say you're doing chapter four of beginning with New Testament Greek, you can actually choose the vocabulary for chapter four and the grammar concepts, namely the paradigms for chapter four, and then put those two together and practice just over the things you've just been learning. And once you've done that, then you wanna go back and add previous vocabulary and previous grammatical concepts in, so that now you're starting to mix it all up. But you can do that with past Greek because it's keyed to the different grammars. The other parsing apps are not keyed to grammars, which means that you have to kind of fudge it a little bit, which is still possible, but it's just not quite as easy. So while Pass Greek is not perfect, it's still the best app, in my opinion, for this third stage of the bridge that you're trying to build to get across the material in this chapter. So the first stage was to learn the vocabulary, the second stage was to learn the paradigms for this chapter, and the third stage is to practice putting the paradigms onto the endings of the, onto those words that you've learned by practicing your passing. The fourth and last stage of the bridge that you need to build out then is the translation material that's typically given to you either in the grammar or in the workbook for the grammar. Now when you do this, here's the thing. The vocabulary will tell you what a word means. The endings tells you the inflection and how that changes the meaning of that word. The passing app will then give you a, an idea of what that will look like in the wild and, and require you to test yourself to see if you can identify the different elements and also, just for what it's worth, when we go back there, 
say the inflected meaning. So if autos, you're looking at the feminine genitive form of autos, you want to say of her, right? So you want to make sure that you're translating the inflected form for each word you see there as well. And then when you get into the, the fourth stage, which is the doing the translation work, all of that stuff should gel together really easily. And you should start to be able to work through the individual words. And as you practice the translation work, chapter by chapter, week by week, these concepts will just get so much easier. But here's the thing, you don't want to do that translation work until you've already learned the paradigms, you've already done learned the vocabulary, and you've already practiced putting all of that together. That's when all that material and the translation work will make the most sense. And here's what I tend to find, now that you've got those four stages down, here's the thing, most people will be tempted to skip stage two. Okay, that is they won't write the paradigms out. And I can understand why, right? Who wants to be writing things out, memorizing them by rote? Nobody enjoys doing that, but it's all the difference between getting from one side of the river to the other side. Without filling in all the pieces of the bridge, you're not gonna get across. And I've seen this over and over again. Students who come to me and they're saying, I'm really struggling with the translation work. I'm not really able to put it together. Or even with past Greek, I'm not able to put together the material in past Greek. I don't understand how the endings are working. And the reason is they've never actually learned the paradigms. They've never fully learned the endings of the word and, and how the words might be affected by those endings. And so, and the reason for that is they're just not writing those out and not learning them by memory. And when they're not learning them from memory, of course, these other pieces just become so much harder. So don't skip any one stage of this. There's a lot of memory work in beginning Greek. That's something you can't avoid. But by doing that memory work, you will make it possible to be able to complete the work for each chapter. Now, that leads me to another question then. How long do I do all of this for? Well, just like when you build a building, you put up scaffolding so that you can put, say, the bricks on the wall. And as you go up the wall, you, you put, lay the bricks. But when you finish laying the bricks on that wall, then you can take the scaffolding down. It's the same with beginning Greek. If you're doing these things, you're doing them as scaffolding. The end point you're getting to is to be able to translate the New Testament without even thinking about it, right? Be able to see the words and understand how they're formed and know the endings without having to go back and learn paradigms and learn vocabulary and so on. And you will get there. But you can think of these four steps as the scaffolding, if you like, that's going to get you to that end point. So the question is, when do you pull the scaffolding down? And the answer to that question is really when you don't need it anymore, right? You don't need to learn and review every single word in the New Testament for instance, it's not going to take you long to word, learn words like kai and men and day and so on because you're going to see these so often in the New Testament there would be a point very quickly where you can just exclude those words and skip them. And you can do this in Flashcards Deluxe, which is the passing app that I recommend. I recommend that you learn the word and if you, after a year you can see that word without, you know, you haven't seen it for a, a year, say, in your passing app, and you see it and you instantly know it, you can exclude it from your deck of cards. And that way, you know that I know that word, right? And the same goes for all of the words of the New Testament. Now, when it comes to the paradigms, again, much earlier, you don't need to get all the way through to the end and get to that one year stage. Typically, there are some paradigms, like noun paradigms, that you're going to have no trouble with, and you better see those a lot faster. Some of the others, like third declension nouns, might take a little bit longer. Some of the verb forms may be a little longer, but again, typically by a few months after you've finished beginning Greek, if you're consistently reading, you can start to reduce the amount of time you do on the paradigm learning and revision, because honestly, you're just starting to see those in the wild and recognize them for what they are. Now, when it comes to passing practice, I do recommend that you continue using the passing tool for a little bit longer, but again, you should only need you know a couple of minutes a day, should be all it takes, and, and even then, you don't even need to spend a lot of time. Just mix up all the concepts and all the vocabulary, spend a few minutes a day, it's gonna give you some of those words that you might not see very often, and as you test yourself on those and you gain confidence, again, you won't need to spend the rest of your life doing these things. So again, these four elements, vocabulary, paradigm memorization, passing practice, and then translation work, Essentially, these first three are all just going to be temporary things that are going to get you from one side of a lesson to the other side with confidence. Once you've got the material in the beginning Greek course down, you can start to taper those things off as you no longer need them. 
But those are the four steps that I encourage you to take. Don't skip any one of them. And I want to know from you, have you got a tip that you've found that's helped you with beginning Greek? If so, leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you there. And if this has been helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to hear more of this, then hit the subscribe button and the notify bell as well. If you're interested in learning Biblical Greek, don't forget to download my free roadmap at masterntgreek.com slash roadmap. I look forward to being a blessing to you as you look at that and also as you continue to watch these videos. Thank you so much for watching these videos. It's a joy for me to do them for you and I appreciate all your support. Keep taking small consistent steps toward mastery and I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you there.